it's snowing a lot outside. I feel like it's a Midwest thing where like we have to comment on the weather. Like that's just how we're all built. And so like I have to tell you, like it's within my bones to tell you that it's snowing and bad outside. But also that's why I'm here at home. Uh, instead of at the studio, I don't want to go to the studio. I don't want to drive in the snow. My dumb little real world drive car does not work in weather like this. So here I am. Today, we're going to talk about lettering. My name is Scott Drummond. I make comics. I do illustrations for board games and things like that. I feel like I have been doing this for enough time that I can give you guys sort of a rundown of things that I have learned and improved upon uh, in my. Uh, years of experience doing this. We're going to talk about lettering in Photoshop specifically, but I think these tips will apply to anything like Illustrator or InDesign or Post Studio Paint, things like that. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll the intro. Okay, so first things first. Don't letter in Photoshop. Don't do this is my first tip, and uh, I'll tell you why you shouldn't, why, why any professional letterer will tell you don't do this. Because Photoshop is a roster um, program as opposed to a vector program. So if you're not familiar with what that means, Photoshop works in terms of pixels, uh, little dots, you know, little squares, and you put all those little pixels and dots together to make a picture. Whereas a program like Illustrator or InDesign works in terms of vector, uh, where you uh, have lines and things that are um, based off of points on in space and math to create perfect curves and lines and things like that. That's how you can get the cleanest lines for your uh, word balloons and things like that. So most professional letters will say, don't use Photoshop, use Illustrator, use InDesign for your lettering. Now, why don't I? There are a couple reasons. Reason one, all of my pages are at 1200 DPI. I'm a crazy person, so I like to have uh, my pages at an insanely high DPI, and so I kind of feel like the printer can only print so much detail, so I'm not losing that much. Two, Photoshop now has all these like vector assets within the program so like you can make ellipses in vector and edit them in vector and you can like make the word balloon tails in vector and things like that and edit them that way and so you won't lose quality when reshaping them whereas if you made a circle and then stretched it around you would lose quality so uh, I make all of my assets within Photoshop vector so that it doesn't lose any quality as I edit them. You can do sort of the same thing in Clip Studio Paint 2. Three, and this is sort of the big one. I really like being able to go back and forth with the art in Photoshop. I really like being able to, you know, do really clean pixel perfect masks to have my letters interact with, you know, borders and characters and things like that. Um, Sometimes with Illustrator, you can get a little bit, you know, like something will be a little bit off and you won't be able to tell until you get to the export. But in Photoshop, you can just zoom in and you see what is going on. And I really like that about working in Photoshop. And then lastly, like I kind of said at the beginning, like I've been doing this for a really long time this way and I'm a stubborn old man now. And so that's why I do it the way that I do it because I am resistant to change. Uh, <sighs> um, so yeah, for better or for worse, that's what I do. And I'm gonna kind of teach you how to do it. So first things first, what do you need to first to start lettering? With any design, you need good fonts. There are two places that I like to get my fonts. Um, one is Comic Craft. They run a site called comicbookfonts.com. They have a huge library of fonts and they are all very, very, very good. I use their font Joe Kubert for a lot of my dialogue, which I love that font. I bought the international version, but I think there's only one version now. So make sure you get the international version of any of those fonts if there is a different version available, because then you get more glyphs and things like that. Glyphs are the like the shape, like the little actual letters. So like 
just get the one with more glyphs. You want more options. They have a lot of really cool um, sound effects fonts too. We're not going to talk about sound effects in this video. I might save that for another video. I love their dialogue fonts though. I think they are wonderful. I, I really dig their stuff. The second place that I would recommend getting your fonts from is Blambot. Uh, Blambot's a site run by a guy named Nate Picos. He is super nice and helpful on Twitter. He has a lot of really good uh, and great fonts for one for sale. Uh, but then they're pretty expensive, like 20 to 40 dollars, and he has a lot of really great free fonts. So if you just wanted to kind of dip your toes in, that's a great spot to get some cool, great free fonts that are pro level. They don't have quite as many glyphs as some other big fonts, uh, but they have a lot of really great stuff. They do all of the things that you want uh, a comic book font to do. And what do you want a comic book font to do? You want it to look handwritten. So that's a big part of it. You want it to feel like it is handwritten and not in like a terrible, like, you know, scripty, this font just came with your computer kind of way. You want it to have a lot of comic specific glyphs, things like octothorps and like exclamation points and all of those things and even like stars and like extra stuff. You want you to have the font include a lot of that stuff, you know, have your uh, quotation marks look like they're handmade, you know, things like that. Things like it will automatically change your uh, the second character in a row, a different version of that character. That's called a ligature, where you have two characters uh, that interact with each other and then it substitutes a different glyph for the two. That's called a ligature. Uh, welcome to my typography class. You want it to do those very specific comics related things. In the same vein as that, as the ligatures, you want it to have an eye that is a straight eye, and you want it to have an eye that is a crossbar eye. Um, that's huge uh, because when you're making comics, the crossbar eye is always used for just the word "I." Like when you say, "I went to the store, I did this, I did that," that is the crossbar eye. If you have a I in a word like sign, then it should be the non-crossbar I. Lettering 101, that's what you need to be doing. To do that, you just hold shift and hit I, and it'll put the crossbar I in there in any comic book font, like that's how it works. And that'll make your comics, like that's like the telltale sign of a pro versus an amateur is they screw up the crossbar I. All right, let's talk about layout. So the first thing you're going to do is make sure you have enough room for your lettering. If there is you know, a super dialogue heavy panel, you might want to say actually do the lettering first and then kind of work your art in around it, especially if you are you know, doing everything. Sometimes if you're just doing the lettering, you can't do that, you're stuck with what you got. But if you control the whole process, you might as well do yourself a favor and not screw it all up in the end. I've got this panel. Right, and I'm going to want to put some lettering here. Uh, I specifically have not, you know, put this guy huge um, on this page so that there's no room to do anything else. So I'm going to have some spot, a spot right here where I can do some lettering. Next thing I'll say is that font size is very important uh, when you're making your font size choices. What I like to do, especially what I'd recommend for new letterers, is to take a page of a comic that you like and are wanting to emulate uh, and pull that onto your page and kind of see what their font sizes are in comparison to yours, right? You know, another thing you can do is even print out some different sizes and see what looks right if you want to make a print comic in the end. If you are doing something like Webtoon, you can do a couple of different sizes, export it to your phone and see what looks right on your phone. Uh, so you don't have something that's like super small and it's impossible to read in, on your phone on a mobile size. So, uh, so we'll write some text here and kind of uh, see what we see. So, so right away we're going to see a couple of things. Um, I'm going to put a white uh, background here behind the text so that and put it at like 70% opacity so that we can see the text a little bit better. So I've got my text size at like 6.5. I found that I like that text size for the size of comic that I do. It's not too big, not too small. It's uh, the Goldilocks size. So when we are making text balloons, we want our text to kind of go from small to big 
to small. Uh, we want that text shape to sort of emulate a balloon shape so that when we put our balloon around it, it will look nice and natural. We're gonna, you know, kind of hit delete here and hit uh, return to get a space there. So now, looking at this, I'm gonna put a line break between get and out, and maybe this in building, and kind of see how this looks. Um, and honestly, it's okay, it's not great. Um, I feel like it's a little bit top heavy right now. So we can play around with a couple different versions of this, and uh, you know, see how different things kind of work out. Um, this looks okay, but it still looks a little bit too bottom heavy. So I like the version uh, where building was kind of just on the bottom at, at its on its own. Um, so you could try something like this, and that's okay. Um, I still think our original version was probably the best. I uh, kind of prefer to have my balloons feel a little more top heavy than bottom heavy, especially because uh, in this sort of scenario, right, this is sort of the space we're working in um, that we've got to fill. And so since the space is wider at the top than at the bottom, I want the lettering to kind of mimic that. If that makes any sense, I don't know if it does. So right away I noticed another thing too, um, O and Heck both have H's right at the beginning. So I'm going to highlight this H and make it a capital H. Uh, uh, actually I'm going to highlight the other H and make it a capital H. So that those two letters right next to each other aren't the same glyph. And it looks a little bit more handwritten. Uh, you can see that it naturally does it with these two T's. The font knows to do it, but if you've got a space in between it, it won't know to do it. Same things with these, with these G's. I'm gonna put, make one a different G here, and that's okay, I don't mind that as much. Maybe change this O, since there are three O's right there. Just some minor stuff, but I think it really helps. The next thing I wanna talk about is your letting. So that's the space between your letters here. So I feel like the automatic setting right here in your character panel is too high. I don't like how wide this space is. You want to kind of compress your letters a little bit and have it look really nice. I use 6.8 for mine. It just feels a little bit more nice and compact. So now that we've got our text all in here, we need to put a balloon behind it. To make a new layer behind the layer that you're on, just hit Command or Control on the PC and click the New Layer button. Uh, I'm going to have white selected here. I hold down here and get all these to come up. So um, hold and go to the ellipse tool. And there's a couple different ways you can do this, right? So like you can have the stroke on it originally or you can take the stroke off. I'm just going to take this stroke off and kind of show you this way. So I'm going to click and drag out from the center and then I'm going to hold alt uh, as I do it. And that will uh, make it kind of go from the center so I know that it's fairly centered. Um, you can also, once you've got this kind of in a, in a spot you like, or you're like, ah, it's not quite right, you can hit shift or uh, command and click here to get both of these layers selected. Hit this align center button and that'll get these center all aligned. And I'm gonna uh, then double click on this ellipse and I can put a stroke on it. I'm positioning this stroke inside and having the blend mode at normal, 100% opacity, uh, have it be black, uh, and five pixels is about uh, what I'm gonna put it at. I like to put my strokes like it could be made from the same pen. So like this feels like it, you know, is from a thinner or thicker thing. So I, you know, I could probably even maybe go down to four if I really wanted to. Maybe I just like a little bit of a thicker stroke on that, like it might get a thicker version of that pen. Now that we've got our stroke on here, I want to adjust this balloon a little bit. It feels like it's really uh, got a lot of space on the outside. As a general rule, I sort of like to have about one letter's worth of space around my uh, text, between the text and the uh, balloon stroke. So I could do, you know, grab this H, copy it, 
And I don't do this every time, but you know, you can kind of generally go, okay, you know, let's put this guy here and you can hit command T and kind of adjust this a little bit while holding alt so it moves both of them. So we can kind of grab that. That looks great. You can select that um, H again and kind of move it around. Hit command T again and drag this down. I'm not going to go full on to here because I want it to feel a little bit, give it a little bit of room, but uh, there. You can also use the uh, direct select tools to mess with these two. So with uh, here, you can grab the uh, direct selection tool, the white one, and that'll let you grab individual points on here. You can click and drag or just click on them. What I want to do is grab these two, hold shift to uh, select both of them, uh, and then I'm going to move this up a little bit, maybe, to uh, kind of emulate that we've got, that we've got to get a little bit higher. Does that look okay? Or do we like it a little bit further down? I'm going to pull this down a little bit. And that doesn't feel too bad. So the next step in making a, a nice word balloon is putting the tail on it. With the ellipse selected, what I like to do is use the pen tool. Just click this guy, and we are going to, uh, over here on the path, we want to combine shapes up here at the top and make sure that that's selected. This is a little bit tricky, but we're going to kind of go through it. So I'm going to click inside here and drag to kind of get this uh, little bezier curve is what that's called. And then I'm going to drag into the balloon so that I want to create a shape that comes in like this. So I do that. And so I know that this is going to pull this out. So I'm going to click down here and drag. So I've got this shape here. And so now this curve looks very nice. And then I want to click down here and just click. Uh, so it, that is a point. And now I'm going to click and drag on the initial point and get that feeling uh, kind of the same um, distance as I made initially. Like this. And there you have it. And you can edit this using the same uh, direct select tool by clicking A or the white uh, you know, direct selection tool here or on here. And you can grab this and move it around a little bit to get it correct. The uh, black direct selection tool will let you grab that whole shape and move it around. I like to point my balloon tail at the mouth of the character that uh, I am working on. Uh, when you have one of these selected also, you can hit Command T and it will just uh, move the selection that you have. So if you're using the regular move tool and hit Command T, uh, it will move everything. But if you are using the direct select tool and have just one thing selected, it will move only that. So I like to move it and have it point directly at the mouth of the character that's speaking. I want to give a little bit of space here. I, what I don't want to do, and I see some people do, that I hate, is do this. Don't do this. This is awful. That is terrible lettering, and you are fired now if you do that. That is very, very bad, and I hate it. So do this. We know who's talking. It's pointing to his mouth, but it's far enough away that it gives him some breathing room. Okay, bonus tip. Now, if we want to make a combined word balloon, like if he says something else, we can just grab this text we've already made and already looks great. We can hold Option or Alt on the PC and click and drag it down here, right? Uh, so then we can put some new text in here. And let's maybe make now a uh, bold version of it. And we don't want to just duplicate this and have another tail going to them. We want to have it so that this balloon is connected to this balloon. And you can do that in a couple different ways. What I want to do is hit the, get the black direct selection tool, path selection tool. I'm going to select this balloon. 
and I can either take this same balloon and drag it down by holding the option key here um, and make it part of this same ellipse or I can hit that ellipse tool and do a similar thing where I go up here and make sure that combined shapes is uh, selected here and now you can see the little plus on the uh, selection tool and I'm going to click and drag here and create a new shape. I want this to feel a little bit more kind of, you know, emphatic. So if you like now, I'm going to uh, hit Command T to transform this. And I'm going to hold Command and Option at the same time and click on this to kind of give this a little bit of a sheer and kind of follow that now a little bit. And just kind of mess with it. Now to connect these, we're going to do a similar thing to what we did with uh, this pen tool balloon. We're going to go to the pen tool. We're going to go into this one and go out of this one and then into this one, out of this one, and then finish this off here. So now this is a nice, simple, um, connector to these two balloons. I want to make sure that this spacing here between this, these kind of balloons are the same uh, as each other, as well as the same as this outer balloon, just for consistency's sake. And that's it. And maybe I over explained a lot of it, but I think those are really good tips. Hit me up with any comments like below if you have any questions or things about lettering. Um, but overall, this is the basics of dialogue. I'll get into another video uh, on how to do sound effects and things like that. That's about it. I need a really good sign off for this video. Like my Close to You of Paint videos have a really good one that I have for those. Should I just use the same one? Is that is that cheating? I say get out there and make some great comics. I think that's a really solid sign off. What do you guys think? Do you guys think I should just keep that sign off for this one? Or just ramble on at the end with no discernible end in sight? I guess we'll find out next time on this channel. All right. Hope you guys have a really good 21. Uh, take care. See you later.